In today's video, I'm going to show you how we recreate this award-winning animation inside of Webflow. Let's get started. Hey friends, this is Kavarza again with another Webflow tutorial. So a few weeks ago, Ron made this video. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you checking it out. He showcased best websites of the month, award-winning websites with cool animations. And among those, there was this specific website with these really nice uh, unhover uh, button animations. And I want to show you how to create them in, uh, in Webflow in this video. So let's get started. So first of all, let's have a look and um, see what they exactly have. So they have a title. So in this case, email, Twitter, IG, they have this title or you can say tag. And then when you hover uh, the white and uh, block shrinks in, uh, in and goes to the corner um, the, the black one or the darker one uh, uh, grows and then the text appears so that it looks like the text is um, already there and it's just uh, being shown by the, this one the, the white one getting smaller and in order to show you how this works I made uh, this simple layout in uh, Figma so we have the the darker background uh, and then we have the tag in it, but there is uh, kind of like a mask. I'm calling it a mask. Uh, they're masking the text underneath it. Uh, and because it's um, you, we don't let anything outside of the box being uh, shown, we clip it, we don't see the rest of it. But so essentially what we see is a light box with this tag on it. And what we want to do is to shrink this one down and uh, also to make this one disappear. And then we grow the black box, the, the darker one, so we see the text. So all we do is shrinking this, making this one bigger, disappearing this, and this one uh, just stays where it is. So let's, let's do this in Webflow. So what we have here is just a simple container, and I'm going to add a link block because we want a button. Uh, we want to give it a name, so maybe something like button wrap. Uh, and we want to style this. I'm going to give it a specific uh, width and height. So it's about 5 rem by 3 rem. Uh, I played around with the sizing before uh, shooting the video, that's why I know it. But you, you feel free to play around uh, and get the size that you want. Next, uh, we, because we are using this link block, we have some text decoration. We want to get rid of that. We give it uh, a dark text color by default. So for the link for this uh, link block, and we want to also give it the kind of dark background that we need. So what we also want to do is we want to change this to display flex. You see in a second why and center center everything because we are going to add another element which is going to be text block so what i normally do is uh, i press Control e or command e on mac to add things from the finder so i'm going to type text text block is what i'm going to add and that's ig now let's um, change the size so i'm going to use 1.8 rem and one unit list for the height. If you haven't seen my video on rems versus m, I highly recommend you checking that because I explain everything here with the rem and uh, m's. But in short, I'm using rem here because I want the user to be able to change its browser setting. Uh, and when they change the browser setting, uh, the button sh shrinks or grows based on the uh, settings in the browser because rems are uh, getting the sizes from the HTML element decided by the browser setting. Okay, so now that we have this, um, we can also change this one. I believe it has to be white. No, this one is actually going to be black because behind it is going to be the Mac mask layer. So I'm clicking on the button again, adding a div block, and this div block, I'm giving it a size 8 ram by 8 ram uh, you see it doesn't work because we want to set it to be absolute for that we change the parent 
to be from position static to, to relative. Now this can be positioned absolute relative to its parent. So it's going to take the space it need, needs to take. And we are going also to, to give it this color. So now what we want to do is to, we kind of want to mask it. So let's give it also a good uh, name, maybe just mask or button mask because it's a button. For now mask is fine. And now I'm going to put the text block inside of the mask. And what we want to do is to change the mask uh, display setting to be flex center center. So we are centering the text easily. Uh, now we have the text and the mask. Next, I'm going to add the last text element. So again, text block. Now we can see it in order to see it. Uh, I'm going to hide this one for now and change this to be uh, the text we want. In this case, it's at Rebarza. That's my Instagram. Uh, now I'm going to change, give it a class, maybe uh, button text. And I'm going to give it the white color that we need. Um, yes, this one needs to be white. And the size, I'm going to make it a bit smaller, one point maybe three rams. Let's see how it is. And also the height one unit less. That should be fine. Now uh, you see this text is in the middle of this button wrap. The reason for that is we change this display setting to be center center flex. But what we want to do is we want to position this absolute. So we position it absolute and from the left side, we want to have it like 20 percentages, 20%, um, 20, 20, I don't know, 24. That looks good for now. Um, now we can turn this back on. Again, it's display uh, flex. So what we want to do is we want to make a circle out of this. So I'm going to make a radius instead of being pixels, we want 100%. So it's circle and nice. Um, again, I'm going to hide it. So we see underneath it. Um, we also want to round these corners. So if I use percentages, again, this uh, creates this shape that we don't want, we want to actually round it using something like rims. So uh, it's, it's now the shape that we want. Okay, let's continue. Uh, but before that, I'm going to turn this back on. What we want to do is to change this one from overflow shown to be overflow hidden. We don't want to be overflow visible. Uh, the same goes for the button wrap. We want to basically mask everything. So we're going to hide it. Um, now you see that this text, uh, the button text is above everything. Uh, on top of everything, we want to change that by maybe giving the mask a higher Z index. So it's just bringing it um, on top. Now that we have this, uh, we can start animating. Okay, so a short recap, what do we have? We have a button wrap that wraps everything in it. Then we have the mask, which is this gray one with the word IG in it. Uh, and then we have the text we have the text underneath everything with the mask having a higher Z index. So it's hiding the text underneath it. And everything has an overflow of hidden, the whole button. So we don't see the text or the um, mask, which are bigger and coming outside of the button. So now let's animate. So what we want to do is we want to animate this button on hover. So we come here to the animations element trigger. We want to mouse hover animation and on hover, we are starting an animation. We can call it hover in because right now that's the only animation we have. But in case you have multiple animations, you have uh, to be better at, at naming them. So hover in uh, for this button, a few things that we want to do. Uh, we want to shrink down the mask we want to grow the button, uh, let the text stay and kind of hide this one. And I'll show you in a second how. So let's start with button wrap selected. 
and we want to increase its size. So we need size. But before that, we need to def define an initial state. So when the page loads and when um, when before the animation happens, what is the initial state? So we are going to set it as initial initial states and give it the width and height that we had. So it was five rams. And since we are not changing the height, I'm actually not going to even put it in because we are just changing the width. Uh, another element that we are going to change is the mask. Uh, we are going to shrink its size. So now we have to give it its original size, which was eight rams by eight rams. Uh, next, I'm going to animate this one. So we want to move it. Um, we want to move it, the text, the IG text, but its initial state is we want to move it on the X axis, but for now it's just zero rems. Uh, it stays where it is at the beginning of the animation. Um, so let's, let's use these for now. I'm going to choose all of them using uh, shift. So click the first one, hold shift, click the last one and just duplicate them. Um, now we can animate them. We can now, so we have the initial state. Now we can add the second state, uh, the on hover state. So we want the button to grow to be something like, I don't know, like 15 or less, like 14 rems for now. We want also the mask to shrink its size um, to be something like 1.5 to 1.5 ram yeah so it's nice and circle there uh something that i missed here is we want to move the mask from the middle from the center to go to the side so we are going to add a move for the mask being selected at the beginning uh it's just where it is so zero ram but we want to move it to the left so i'm going to duplicate it again group this with the rest and now we can just eyeball it and we move it minus five rem to the left. So now you see that the word G is the IG actually, uh, it's moving with it. So we want to move this in the opposite direction. So we are going to move it five rem. Uh, so plus five, the other one is minus five. So it kind of looks like it's staying there. So if we play the animation, we see it actually uh, works pretty nicely. Maybe the whole button is just a bit too big. This looks better. Maybe 13. So just eyeballing it. That looks better to me. Uh, now we can add one last thing. So if you notice uh, when we are in the non hover state, uh, there is a little bit of pixel bleeding so that it depends also on the browser and in the uh, published site, depending on browsers and device, you might not see it. You also might see like a little bit of pixel bleeding because the background is dark and you see it against it. There is a nice hack to it. Uh, we can add another animation. So I'm going back to the animation. I want to make this button wrap background color to be the same color as the foreground so on the in, in the initial state so we actually don't see the uh, black or the dark background so i'm going to add a background color to the button wrap and i'm going to change it i'm using this uh, eye drop color i'm using chrome and it's a uh, extension uh, from webflow uh, to be the same color and now we want to duplicate this and we want to change this one to be the dark color that we want. I actually don't remember the exact color, so I'm just eyeballing it here. Uh, but it's fine because we are going to have the same for the hover out. So now that we have it, we see it works, but now we need to play with the timing and uh, easing to make it nice. So this one, the, uh, the this one, or kind of hacking it, the background color, I want it to actually happen really fast. So instead of being two point, uh, um, 
point um, five seconds. I want it to happen in point uh, two, so it's pretty faster. So now we don't see the transition as much, but even it can be one five. So this is better. And for the rest of them, or actually all of them, we can um, we can change the easing to be I like I uh, to be ease out quad, which I like a lot. So now it's much smoother, and the animation happens with a nice easing. We can also change the timing um, by default 0.5, which I don't really like. I normally tend to make the animation duration longer. This is a nice tip, but uh, make it feel faster as, and snappier by using easings. Uh, so you can try out easings. You can even uh, go to custom easing and play around with these yourself and see how it works or choose any of them. So if you don't know how they are, you can actually play it out from here. But again, I'm going to use ease out quad for now. So this is for hover in. Now we want to ho hover out when our mouse goes out. We want to start another animation. So what we do is we are not going to recreate the animations. We are going to just duplicate this and rename it to be hover out. So what is our hover out animation? It's going to be the same as it was before the mouse entered um, the space. So that means it's essentially the initial state. So we are going to delete the rest, um, ch uh, ch uh, check all of these, uh, select all the initial states, and I'm going to uncheck it. So now they are basically an animation, but we see that they all happen um, at this uh, duration, which we want to make maybe less uh, to reduce it because we want maybe we want to make the hover out a little bit snappier and use maybe another ease out. Okay, so let's try it out. It looks quite nice, uh, but the IG seems to be moving a bit strangely. That's because we are moving it in the opposite direction what, uh, of what it's going. Um, and not just that, the animation feels just slower in comparison to this. So if we uh, speed up the animation, we won't also see that problem. So I'm going back to the animation, hover in maybe the entire thing, except for this one, which was really fast. The entire thing, maybe instead of 0 0.6, we go back to 0 0.4. And maybe for hover out, we can choose something like, instead of 0 0.4, maybe 3. I normally don't use 3, but let's see how it works. So looking at it again, OK, it's much snappier. And maybe the ease out can be also the same duration and the same easing. Yeah, I think that that's quite nice, except for the easing. Maybe this one should be back ease out thin. So it looks quite nice. Let's publish it. It works quite nice. That's it. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. And if you want to see more of these Webflow tutorials, uh, feel free to comment them below and let me know what type of animations or Webflow tutorials you want to see on the channel. And I'll be at it. Um, so till then, uh, don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching. Peace.